Are you ready to add a touch of magic to your baked goods? In today's tutorial, I'll show you how to make your own 3D butterfly sprinkles that are guaranteed to take your desserts to the next level. Be sure to check the description for recipes and product links. When creating icing transfers, people generally place parchment paper or cellophane on top of the printed template. For these, I prefer to laminate my templates. That's because I don't like having to push down on a top sheet in order to see the printed details underneath more clearly. It's just nice to be able to pipe directly onto the laminate. Also, these butterflies aren't incredibly delicate designs, so for the most part, once they dry, they remove without any issues. First things first, I'm going to tape my template down so it doesn't scoot at all. I like to tape it onto a movable surface because I let the royal icing dry overnight before removing the transfers. If it's on a separate surface, I can move them off my work area without having to worry about accidentally bending the paper and destroying all my hard work. As far as supplies go, we don't need much. I'll be using royal icing in three colors, bright blue, black, and white. Royal icing consistency is really important for these guys. The consistency we're looking for is as thick as you can go while still allowing the surface of the royal icing to flatten out smoothly. When I'm mixing my icing, I test it by shaking the bowl a little bit and making sure that the surface still flattens out. We'll also be using a small amount of thick consistency royal icing for the bodies. You'll also need a scribe tool or toothpick. And then once we're putting these together, I'll be using these rubber tip tweezers. I'm using tipless piping bags. I think they're so much easier for designs like this. You can cut the hole whatever size you need and it just keeps things nice and simple. We're going to start by outlining in black and I'm going to fill in to this first line on the template. And then I'm going to fill the rest of the wing with blue. Grab your scriber toothpick. I'm going to pull from the outer top corner towards the center corner and then from about the middle of the outer edge to the center and again from the bottom outer edge to the center. I don't necessarily clean my scribe in between because I kind of like when it leaves those little globs of blue on the edge. It adds a nice additional little detail. And then I'm going to grab my white and do three dots in descending sizes. And the facing wing, exact same thing. So I'm filling into that first line on the template, then with blue and doing the feathering. And then again with the white dots. And we're just gonna keep going exactly like that. Right now, we're just focusing on getting these top wing sections finished. When we're doing the feathering with our scribe or toothpick, don't press down too hard at all. I'm just dragging it through the very top surface of the royal icing. If you press down too deeply, you're going to run the risk of dragging a lot of royal icing to that inside corner, and it's going to get really heavy on the inside, which I'm trying to avoid. It's extremely humid here today, so I'm going to take the time to set each row in front of my tabletop fan for about 10 minutes or until they lose that super shininess. Okay, so these top wings have crusted over. I'm going to go ahead and pipe the bottom wings. I'm going to do a slightly different effect just to keep things visually interesting, but super easy as well. So when piping the bottom wings, I'm going to trace with black again to that first line on the template. I'm going to do a white stripe to that second line and then fill with the blue. And then I'm just adding that little bit of feathering three times. I want to keep a little bit of a dip between the top and bottom wings to show that they're separate sections, but we do want them touching so that they adhere once we take them off the template. Now for the very smallest wings. The bottom wings are so tiny, I'm just going to pull my scribe through twice on each. Also, you may find you need to wipe your scribe between each pass if things start looking too messy. Once I'm finished with all my sheets, I'm going to allow these to dry overnight before removing them. Okay, so here they are all dry. To remove the wings, just gently bow the laminate back and forth a couple of times while holding the paper by the tall sides. The wings have that little dip in the center, so I want to avoid bending the paper the other direction and possibly cracking them at their weak point they should mostly slide off on their own. It's still really humid here though, and mine are sticking a little more than normal. So I'm just very gently pushing them with my thumb to get them unstuck. Because the wings aren't drastically different in size, I like to organize them by size as I remove them. It makes the process of pairing them up so much easier. One of the reasons I love working with laminate templates is you can easily wipe them off and reuse them. That's what I did here before starting on the final step. 
So for the bodies, I'm using a thick consistency royal icing, basically what you'd use to pipe something like flower petals or leaves. We're looking for it to hold a stiff peak, like this. I'm going to fill in this little center template with my stiff black icing and actually go over it twice to give myself enough icing for the wings to stick to. I'm going to insert the right wing, then lay it flat. Next, I'll attach the left wing at about a 90 degree angle. If your icing isn't thick enough to hold them in place, I recommend taking the time to remix it with more powdered sugar and try again. If you have nimble fingers, you might not need tweezers, but I'm an incurable klutz who's known to destroy things. These rubber tip tweezers are a lifesaver for me when working with tiny decorations. So we're just going to keep at this until all the wings are attached, then allow them to dry for at least a couple of hours before trying to remove them. Dry time will depend on how thick your icing is and whether you're dealing with any humidity. And here they are all finished. I'm absolutely obsessed with making these and I love trying out different color combos and designs. I always make lots and keep the extras in jars in my sprinkle drawer. They're such a fun and playful finishing touch on a variety of dessert designs. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to stay connected to lots of pastry art goodness.